Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the coronavirus pandemic. I'm Dr. Risha Desai. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Osmosis. I'm also a pediatric infectious disease doctor, and I used to work at the CDC in the viral diseases branch doing outbreak research. So today I want to talk about COVID-19 and how it survives on surfaces. If you go to the CDC website, you can see it talks about spread from contact with contaminated surfaces or objects, and it specifically says that touching an object that has virus on it and then touching your, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, this is kind of the portal through which it enters any of these mucous membranes, that's how you pick up the virus. So first things first, a question comes up, how often do we actually touch our face? And there's a study here uh, about face touching, and they specifically looked at medical students, kind of an interesting subgroup, and they said that essentially 26 observed students touch their face, and here's the catch, 23 times per hour. Per hour. So that's once every three minutes, and then a couple after that. And then we have, of those touches, 44% involved contact with the mucous membrane. So again, 44% of that touching was happening kind of in this zone that we know is the very vulnerable part of us and how the virus gets in. So there's this neat video I came across on YouTube that helps to illustrate how this happens. And they actually didn't use uh, a virus, that would be unethical, but they used something called glow germ. And it's this powdered substance that they basically put on a person's hand, a teacher's hands, and then they had the teacher shake the hands of three students as they walked into class, but none of the other students. And they wanted to see how it would spread if the, if the students didn't know that they just shook hands with the teacher that had glow germ on it. So let me just show you what that looked like. So this is the, the hands, and this is what it looks like with glow germ on it. So it kind of lights up a little bit. This is the teacher shaking the hands of a few of the students and then kind of holding uh, her hands back and not touching any of the other students as they walk into class. Also what they did during that school day is they actually had one student volunteer to get some glow germ powder on, on his hands just to see what would happen if, if a student directly had some on their hands as well. So to be clear, these students didn't know, uh, the other students didn't know that they had glow germ or that this was even an experiment that was happening. They were going about their usual school day, washing their hands, cleaning their desks, all the normal activities, and of course interacting with each other. So at the end what they did is they took a light to show and shine out where all the glow germ had ended up. And you can see it ended up on the doorknob here, it was on the telephone, on the keypad, and you can see it ended up on the doorknob here, a few other areas around the sink, you know, the faucet, the, the soap dispenser. They highlighted it in pink so you could see it better. Also on the telephone, on the keypad. So kind of in a lot of areas, especially hard or non-porous fomites, fomites are kind of environmental surfaces, things like plastic and metal, rather than things that are porous, like cloth or cushions. And so there's this great study in that context that I wanted to kind of bring up. It talks about persistence of coronaviruses on inanimate surfaces. And this great table that I'm gonna show you that illustrates a couple of key points. One is that you'll notice that essentially if you give or put more virus on an object, it lives for longer. So a couple of examples of that. Here with paper, you see they put 10 to the sixth, 10 to the fifth, and 10 to the fourth virus. And the experimenter decided to do that. And they wanted to see how long it would persist for and then it persists for one day, three hours, or less than five minutes. So again, if you put a larger load, it lingers longer. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but it gets the point across. It lingers longer if there's more on there to begin with. This was also seen when you look at disposable gowns. Again, 10 to the sixth, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the fourth, and it lingered for two days, one day, and then just one hour. So again, what you really wanna think about is how much virus is actually going down on a surface, and that gives you a sense for how long it's going to persist on that surface. The other thing, and the other reason I, I kind of like this study, is that they talk about MERS. Now, this is not COVID-19, it's not SARS-CoV-2. They're talking about the other related coronavirus that caused an outbreak uh, now about eight years ago. But they actually looked at this MERS virus and wanted to look at two different temperatures, 20 versus 30 degrees, and they found that the persistence fell as you warm things up. So at 20 degrees, it persisted for 48 hours, versus at 30 degrees Celsius, it was only eight to 24 hours. Same amount in this case. In this case, it was 10 to the fifth. That was on steel. They did the same thing with plastic, again, with the MERS virus. And you can see 20 degrees, it lasts for 48 hours. And at 30 degrees, it's eight to 24 hours. So two key points here, the amount of virus matters. And if there's more, it lingers for longer. 
and at warmer temperatures, at 30 degrees Celsius, it seems to not persist as long. So now there have been studies looking at SARS-CoV-2, and we do have some data. We actually, at Osmosis, put together this really awesome infographic that shows how long it's been shown to survive. Again, the number of days is less relevant than just the general idea that the virus does persist outside of human bodies. It can persist in the environment, and that's why we have to be really thoughtful about all sorts of surfaces, ranging from uh, latex gloves, to stainless steel, to cardboard, to wood, to glass, etc. So you can see that this does exist out there, and to, to deal with it, now we have to take it to the next level and talk about cleaning. So the CDC website has a section on how to protect yourself and others, and if you scroll down here, it talks about the importance of cleaning and disinfecting. It really puts out three options. It says, you know, you can use a dilute bleach. Here they recommend five tablespoons of bleach per gallon or four teaspoons per quart of water. They also say you can use alcohol solutions at least 70%. And then they give you a link to EPA registered household disinfectants that you might be able to use as well. So that's those are the options that you can try out to clean surfaces and they recommend doing it regularly. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to get daily updates. Also check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for more resources. And again, remember to do your part to raise the line and also to flatten the curve. We're all in this together. Thank you.